So in this part of the video, I'm going to be talking about nasal rinses. These are really important to remove the pollen from the inside of your nose and also to clear away some of the mucus so that the nasal steroid will work a bit more effectively. And you can use these as much as you want. Uh, do not use normal tap water. Um, because it's pure water, it will probably just cause more mucus to be produced uh, and then you'll end up with a, a much more blocked nose than usual. So you can buy the sterile saline solution from the pharmacy, um, but you can also make your own just to, to save money and uh, this is very easy actually. So essentially what you do is you take a pint of water, uh, a teaspoon, a flat teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of baking soda. Make sure you don't use baking powder. Baking powder is not the same thing as baking soda and it will make your rinse fizzy, which is not what you want on the inside of your nose. Boil the water until it's all dissolved and then let it cool to room temperature before you use it very obviously. Now, if you go onto the NHS website, uh, it will say that you need to make a fresh batch every time you want to rinse your nose. I personally think that's a little bit overkill. So obviously the concern there is that if you leave the solution for too long, uh, for too many days, it will get contaminated with uh, bacteria. Uh, and then if you squirt it up your nose, you're going to have a bad time. I think it's probably safe if you keep it in the fridge uh, to use one part of solution for a few days. And this can be a really useful thing to do in hay fever management to get in all the pollen out of your nose and we use this in addition to other pollen avoidance strategies. A lot of people when they go outside and they know that it's going to be a particularly sunny day and the pollen counts are high uh, they will often put a bit of Vaseline around the nostrils and that will hopefully trap some of the pollen and stop it from going inside the nose. You may even put some on your eyelashes as well and some people wear wraparound sunglasses the ones that fit really close to your eyes uh, to try again to reduce the pollen exposure that you're getting. If you're comfortable doing so and I think most of us probably are after coronavirus uh, you can wear a face mask and again that will block some of the pollen particles from getting into your nose. Uh, there, none of these strategies are 100% effective. As long as there's air going into your lungs then some pollen will probably get into your lungs but as much as you can get rid of uh, will help to re reduce your symptoms. Then when you go home and you go inside uh, it's often useful to try and get the rest of the pollen off you so that you're not exposed to it while you're indoors. So when you come through the front door, uh, try and take off at least the outer layers. Uh, and if you have time, go upstairs and have a very quick rinse. You don't need to use soap or shower gel or anything to wash the pollen off. A quick rinse with just water will do absolutely fine. In the house, a lot of hay fever sufferers will close the windows uh, so that pollen isn't floating through the windows and then settling on all the surfaces. Um, and some people will like to make a little bit of a, a safe zone for themselves. So particularly with something like the bedroom, uh, they will um, go outside in the morning, close the door to the bedroom, close all the windows to the bedroom so that no pollen is entering the bedroom at any point. And then at the end of the day, once you've had a quick rinse, gotten all the pollen off you, you can go into your bedroom, safe in the knowledge that when you put your head on the pillow, the pillow is not going to be covered in pollen and giving you an awful night. So these strategies can be really useful in order to reduce your pollen exposure and reduce your symptoms. So in the last part of this video series, I'm just going to be talking about what's available from your GP or from the specialists to deal with your hay fever. And uh, there's not a lot to talk about here. So there's a couple of medications that we sometimes use as GPs. In young children where we might want to limit the uh, steroid exposure that you're getting from the nasal sprays, it's a very small amount anyway and it's really only going to the, the surface of the nostrils, but a very small amount does go into the bloodstream. Um, and so there are certain types of steroids that have a lower uh, bloodstream concentration and have less systemic effects on your body. Uh, we might prescribe those for young children because we know that steroids in the bloodstream can slightly reduce the, the growth velocity. And the last thing to mention is desensitization therapy or immunotherapy, which is a very effective method uh, for reducing hay fever symptoms. Uh, essentially involves graded exposure to the allergen, in this case, the type of pollen that you're allergic to uh, and exposing you to it on a regular basis so that your immune system gradually learns to ignore the pollen. Now, unfortunately, it isn't available on the NHS at the moment. Uh, hopefully in the years or decades to come, as allergies become more and more common, um, it will become available, um, but it's not at the moment. And so you would have to look into getting that privately if you wanted to have it. Well, I hope that series of tips has been helpful for you in order to uh, help you self-manage your hay fever. Thank you very much for watching.